Welcome to John Gets Games. Today we'll be playing through a full three-player game of Call to Adventure. Now the reason this video is being made is because it won the monthly poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of this channel. Now in terms of the play itself, I will be teaching all of the rules while we are playing, and I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because if any mistakes are made, I can then put corrections directly on the screen and you should be able to see them. Now in terms of what we are doing in Call to Adventure, everybody essentially is crafting a character as they progress through life. They will start off with an origin story, they will have some motivations, and a destiny that they are aspiring to, and as they play throughout the game, they will acquire various new traits, as well as uh, face numerous challenges, and as you face those, you will cast a variety of runes that will be modified by the various uh, traits and attributes that you have picked up throughout the game. Now, I will explain how all of this works while we are playing, but before we jump in, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please click the like button for it, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support this channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com slash support to find a variety of ways with which you could do that, and there are many different perks as well, including voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month, like this one right here. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have Call to Adventure fully set up and ready to play. Now, we are going to play from the perspective of the red player right over here, although I would like to mention that these colored cubes don't actually come with the game. I'm just using them to make it a little bit easier to tell whose turn it is during the playthrough. Now, as part of setup, each one of us got two origin cards. We also got two motivation cards and two destiny cards. We then all simultaneously chose one of those origins, motivations, and destinies, and we put them out onto our player areas. Now, you'll notice that we have all three of those face up, but our opponents have their destinies hidden. Now, that is because our destinies do not become revealed to everybody else until the very end of the game when we do final scoring, but I'll leave mine face up so that's obvious and easy for us to remember what we are going for. We are the starting player, so let's begin things off with our first turn, and before we take any actions, let's take a closer look at our player board. Now, the first thing really to jump out will be these three cards. As I mentioned before, we have an origin, a motivation, and a destiny, but let's take a closer look at the specific ones that make up our character. Our origin over here is the fact that we are a hunter, and this means that during challenges, if we ever come up with wisdom or dexterity when we cast runes, we will gain extra experience. Now everybody starts the game with three experience, and every experience is worth one point at the end of the game, but more importantly, you can use experience in a variety of ways as you are accomplishing uh, challenges and taking traits. Now when it comes to our motivation throughout life, we are born lucky, and we are going to try to utilize that to our uh, uh, best effect. We can see down here that once per turn, we can spend an experience, which again is one victory point, and then we can use that to flip over one of the dark runes we just cast. Now I'll explain how all of that works pretty soon here, but now let's go over here and see that last Lastly, our destiny is to be the people's champion. We can see that it says that at the end of the game, we will get one triumph point for every strength or wisdom that is showing up within our life story, and we will get one point for every plus one in our story. Now, these plus ones are essentially challenges that are harder to accomplish than normal, and if you look at the cards that we have in front of us, in the top right corner, we have some icons. We can see right off the bat, the fact that we are a hunter means we start with one dexterity and one wisdom, and we see over here, the people's champion comes with one story icon. There are six different types of story icons in this game, and this one in particular is Divinity. Now, we will get bonus points at the end of the game if we have two, three, or four of uh, the same type of story icon, so it definitely makes sense for us to try and get more of these Divinity icons as we are playing. With that in mind, it's now time to come up here and look at these story decks. The first thing to note is there are three acts as we go throughout the game, and at the start of the game, we only have the Act 1 cards face up. We will see the Act 2 cards as soon as any one player has taken three of these Act 1 cards and filled up their origin, and then moved on to the second act of their life. Now I'll explain how that works in greater detail when we get there, but what this means is right now, we only have these four cards available to us. Alright, let's now start taking actions for our turn, and the main one that everyone will always do once on each of their turns is to either gain a trait or face a challenge. Now we can see out here there are two of these traits available right now, and two challenges that we could go ahead and face. When it comes to these traits, there is a uh, requirement down at the bottom. Uh, we can see over here, uh, there's no specific requirement, but we have to become more corrupt if we want to uh, add Orvin to our origin. But over here, if we add Studious to our origin, we will either need to have Intelligence or we would have to expend one experience. 
Now, there are two other card options available to us, and they are both challenges, and the way these work is you have to face these challenges by casting runes. Now, you will do this better if you have matching attributes. We could see for this dangerous artifact, if we had wisdom and or constitution, that would help us out getting to a threshold of four when we cast our runes. And then over here, we have the academy, and this one requires wisdom as well as intelligence. Now, I'll tell you right now, without even going into the rune casting uh, mechanic, that four is going to be hard for us to get to because at the start of the game, the only attributes that we have are wisdom as well as this dexterity. Now, this wisdom will apply a little bit over here to this academy, but you'll notice both of these require this intelligence. Now, because of that, I think what we should do on our first turn is gather this studious trait, and that will give us one intelligence, and that means on our next turn, we will be better prepared to go after either one of these. Now, as I said before, down below, it says that we can only get this if we already have a wisdom or if we spend an experience. As I mentioned before, we don't have any intelligence yet, so this means we do have to spend one of our experience, and that is a bummer because this is worth one point at the end of the game, and it makes casting runes uh, a little bit better for us, but I think this is still important because gathering this one intelligence and adding it to our character is going to make us more well-rounded in the future, especially next turn when we potentially try to face one of those two challenges. Now what we do with this card is we are going to tuck it underneath our current character card, and that is always going to be the left-hand most card that does not already have three cards tucked underneath it. Obviously, at the moment, we have no cards tucked, so we can slide this right underneath the hunter here, and we are now a studious hunter. We have one extra intelligence for the rest of the game, and we have gained one arcana story icon. Just like the divinity icon right over here, we will start getting points for this at the end of the game as long as we have two or more of them. So that is another icon that we are going to be looking to grab as we are gaining traits as well as facing challenges throughout the game. At this point, we are done with our main action, but there are other actions that we can take before we finish out our turn. These can happen either before or after the main action, and one of them involves just using any of the abilities listed on your face-up cards. Another thing that you can do is spend one of your experience in order to discard any one of the cards out on the story rows and replace it. And the last thing that we could do is spend our hero or our anti-hero cards. Now, at the start of the game, everybody has one hero card, and there are many ways to draw these anti-hero cards, and you can only play these cards if you are at the right spot on this corruption track. You'll see that at the start of the game, we are in the middle neutral spot, and these numbers along the side show you how many points you will get for being at that spot at the end of the game. Whenever you see these white diamonds, those are triumph points, and these black diamonds are tragedy points, but both of them essentially equal victory points at the end of the game, unless modified by other cards that you might have. Now on the right hand side, you will see another very important symbol uh, right over here. It is just a white symbol. This shows white, black, white, black, and then black, black, black. Now this tells you if you are able to play hero cards or anti-hero cards. At the start of the game, we are in the white, black spot, which means we could play any hero or anti-hero cards if we want to. But as we become uh, more corrupt or more virtuous, this might actually restrict our ability to play these cards. Now the first one that we started the game off with says Comrade in Arms. You can see it has one triumph point in the top left corner, and every single hero card has a triumph point, and every anti-hero card has one tragedy point. You only get these points if you actually play these cards out, and the text down at the bottom of ours says we could give another player one experience, they would gain a virtue, which means they would go up once on this corruption track, and then we would get plus two on our next attempt this turn. Now that involves casting runes when we face a challenge, and we are going to be doing that pretty soon, so we'll likely use this uh, later on in the game, but for now I think we are done with our turn. At this point, we are just about ready to have the green player go, but the final thing we have to do on our turn is refill this spot on the row. Now, we always draw from the same act as the uh, vacancy here, and in this case, that's an act one card, and we have found an animal companion. So normally, we would put this right over here. However, this animal companion is a special type of card called an ally. Now, you can see down here that this has some special text and a plus one at the top. Now, what you do with these allies is the player whose turn it is, and it's technically still our turn, gets to tuck this under one of the face-up challenges out on the board, and then that challenge will have plus one to their difficulty. If you remember, we have a destiny that actually gives us plus uh, one point, or at least one triumph point, for every one of those plus ones in our area, so we are trying to accomplish as many of these plus ones as we can, although that plus one does make it harder to complete the challenge, and I think because of that, let's tuck this underneath this uh, the academy card. 
The reason for that is because we already have an intelligence and a wisdom, so we are hoping to uh, complete this one. It does make this a 4 plus 1 or a 5 to complete, and I'll explain how the uh, facing these challenges works very soon here, but obviously going from 4 to 5 is going to make that a little bit harder, but hopefully we can be the ones to actually achieve this over here. Now we have to keep drawing to refill the spot, so now we have found a cruel winter challenge. Uh, we have stealing to survive on the top and foraging for food as options, and for the moment we can just put this right here. Our turn is officially done, and now the green player can go. They're going to start things off by reading out their two available character cards. We can see that their origin is an apprentice, and their motivation is they are bound by honor. Now this bound by honor actually has a plus two triumph points in the top corner, so they already have effectively two points heading towards them at the end of the game. We can look down here and see that their apprentice says that once per turn, when they attempt a intelligence or a dexterity challenge, they can pay one of their experience here to gain a hero card. And then over here, this bound by honor says that whenever they overcome a challenge by one or less, they get to gain one of these experience. Now we've talked a lot about facing challenges and it looks like the green player is going to do that for their main action. When they come back to the story row, we can see they've decided they want to face this dangerous artifact. Now whenever you face a challenge, you have to choose either the top path or the bottom path. In general, the path that you choose is going to dictate the rewards that you get if you are successful at completing this challenge. We can see they can either harness the dark power of this dangerous artifact, and that will get them one anti-hero card as well as one intelligence. Instead, they could resist the temptation of this dangerous artifact, and that will give them one constitution for the rest of the game, and it will give them one divinity story point. Now it looks like the green player has decided they do want to resist the temptation. Next up, as part of this challenge process, the green player has decided they want to activate their apprentice as an action. We can see this says that once per turn, when they attempt an intelligence or dexterity challenge, they can pay one of their experience in order to gain one hero card. Well, we can see this dangerous artifact is an intelligence and a constitution uh, challenge, so that matches up with the intelligence there. So they're going to spend this experience, and that allows them to draw another hero card. Now, after they have done that, they can then look to these two types of attributes and then scan their area to find that number of those icons. So they are looking for intelligence icons and these constitution icons. And when we look out here, they have a dexterity and an intelligence, and that is it for their icons at the moment. That means they have one applicable intelligence icon. However, before they move on, they have decided they want to use this hero card. Now down below it says that you play this before you attempt a challenge and you can add an extra strength or a constitution rune to this attempt. So that means they have effectively one extra constitution and they're going to get one triumph point at the end of the game for playing this card. Now we can look down here and see that this needs constitution as well as the uh, intelligence. So they have one intelligence now as well as one constitution. So it's now time for them to gather up their runes. Now the first step towards building out your rune pool is a player will always grab all three of the basic runes. Now whenever you cast runes, you simply throw them out onto the table, and you can see that there are two different options on them. Now when it comes to these basic runes, there is a slash on one side, and this counts as one towards the challenge, and you only succeed the challenge if you meet this number or exceed it. Now we can see that if they have a perfect uh, cast right here with all three of these, then that brings them to three, which is not quite the four that they would need. And you'll see that the back side of these has two blanks, and this one is a special blank. It adds zero towards this total, but as a prize, a consolation prize really, you can draw one of the hero cards or an anti-hero card. Now, obviously, this is nowhere near enough for them to try and get to four, but you'll know they have one intelligence, and that means they get to add one of these intelligence runes to the pool. On one side, there is a slash, which adds one, and on the other is the intelligence symbol, and this will add two. Whenever you have a symbol like this, that adds two to the overall total that you're going towards, and we know that they played this inner strength card, and that adds either a strength or or a constitution to this uh, rune pool, and that means, in this case, they will take a constitution because that matches up with one of the two requirements for this dangerous artifact. Now, you may have noticed that inside some of these pockets right here, there is a rune with these dots. Now, this is special. Uh, you only ever get to cast this one if you have three or more of the same type of the attribute. So if the green player had three intelligence, then they would cast all three of these at the same time. Now you see on one side there is this symbol which adds two if it comes up, and on the other side this is effectively a nice blank. It adds zero towards the challenge total, but you get a bonus, and in this case that allows you to draw another hero card. Now obviously the green player only has one intelligence, so they're just going to cast this one here, and the last thing that they get to do is they can potentially add dark runes to their pool. 
Now you can do this up to three times on a turn. You can see there are only three of these, and it's going to cost one experience for every one of these that you want to add. On one side of each of these, there is a one, which is going to obviously add one to the uh, challenge total that they're trying to defeat. And on the other side, there are these moons. Now the moon will give two towards that total if they go with it. However, for every one of these moons that shows up, the player will go down once on their corruption tracker. And that is a uh, risk that the player has to take when they decide to add these to their pool. At this point, the last thing the green player has to do is just shake these up and cast them, and it looks like they actually got exactly what they needed. That's going to be one, two, three, four, and they needed to get to four or more in order to resist the temptation of this dangerous artifact, and it looks like they were successful. They can now come back to their board and take their rewards. And in this case, we know that they resisted temptation, so that means they're going to tuck this under just like that to show that bonus down here. We now know they are an apprentice who resisted dark temptations, and they now have one constitution, as well as one of these divinity story icons. At this point, green is not done, though, because we know their motivation is they are bound by honor, and it says whenever they overcome a challenge by one or less, then they gain one experience, so they can add this right over here. Now, it is worth noting, if they had not gotten to the prerequisite to defeat this challenge right here, if they had gotten a three or less, then instead they would have discarded this card right here and then gained one experience as a consolation prize. At this point, it looks like green is done with their actions. This means green can finish out their turn by drawing another card, and in this case, they have found an adventurous trait. Now, this gives one constitution, and it adds one nature story icon, and down below it says you may only gain this if you have uh, at least one constitution, or if you spend an experience. All right, the blue player can now take their first turn of the game, and before they take any actions, let's learn a little bit about their character. We know their origin is they are an outlander. This gives them a constitution and a wisdom, and down below it says that whenever they fail a constitution or wisdom challenge, they gain an extra two experience. So normally when you fail, you get one, but if uh, the blue player fails one of these two types, they actually get three as a constellation prize, so not bad. Uh, we also see over here they are trained by a master, and this means that once per turn, they may spend one of their experience in order to gain a strength until the end of the turn. The first thing the blue player wants to do is their main action, and they've decided to gain this adventurous trait. We can see they can only take this if they have constitution or if they spend an experience. And fortunately for them, they do have a constitution, so they don't have to spend anything. They can now slide this right over here, so they are an adventurous outlander. They can keep all of their experience, and in fact, they are going to be done with their actions. They do have one hero card, but they've decided it does not make sense to play it right now. This means they can finish their turn by drawing a new Act 1 card, and this one is a challenge. It says Street Fight. You can either learn to fight dirty, and that will give you a villainy story icon as well as a dexterity, or you can become a brawler, and that will give you one anti-hero card and one strength. All right, we can now take our second turn of the game, and I think it's time for us to try and face a challenge. At the moment, there are three challenges up here, and I think the one we want to go after is going to be over here. Now, this is going to be a five that we have to get to instead of four, but of course, we are hunting after that because we gain a triumph point for every one of those plus ones in our area at the end of the game. Now, we also get one triumph point for every strength or uh, wisdom icon showing. So that means over here, we would potentially want to learn deep lessons. That would get us one hero card as well as one of these wisdoms, which would match up and get us a bonus point. However, there is something to be said for trying to excel in our studies. The reason for that is because it would give us one arcana story icon, and we picked up one of those already. Now, at the end of the game, if you have one of a type of icon, you get no points. If you have two of that icon, you get two points. Three of that icon gets you four points, and four or more gets you eight points. So it certainly does make sense to try and chase these icons where we can, and I think that that is what we should do. So let's go to the academy and try to excel in our studies. The next thing that we can do is figure out how many icons apply to us. The academy right here wants wisdom and intelligence, and we currently have one wisdom and one intelligence. So we can add those into our rune pool, and we're looking okay, but we do have to hit five in order to defeat this challenge. Now, because of that, I think we should probably play this hero card in front of us. We are uh, able to play that because right now we're on the neutral spot, and that allows hero and anti-hero cards. And this is going to force us to give one of our two experience away to an opponent. But then we will go up once on this corruption track, and we will get two uh, added to our next attempt this turn. Now, I think technically we should have played this before we started our challenge, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and give this, I think, over to the blue player. And now we know we have plus two, and we 
can go up once. So we now are at one spot on this virtue area. We can see we now have four triumph at the end of the game if we stopped here instead of the two, although we are now no longer able to play anti-hero cards. Well, at the moment, we don't actually have any anti-hero cards, so I think that's fine. And of course, we can put this to the side so that we know we get one triumph point at the end of the game for playing it. So let's build our pool. We'll use the three basic ones, and then we know we have one intelligence as well as one wisdom. And normally I would be tempted to play a dark rune, especially considering we are born lucky. Uh, this lets us spend one experience to flip one of the dark runes over. However, we only have one experience left at this point, and I think with our plus two we should be okay to get to five. So that means we can now cast the runes and see how this goes. And it looks like we are fine. We have two for this one, two for that one, and one over there. That means we actually hit five without even playing this card. So playing this was a bit of a waste, although we did go up once on our corruption track, which is nice. Uh, we were kind of hedging our bets. I didn't think we'd do that well. And as a bonus, this one right here gives zero towards the challenge. We do get to draw a hero or anti-hero card. And considering we can't even play the anti-hero cards right now, let's draw the top hero card into our hand. In this case, we have found a brilliant plan, and we can play this before an attempt, and we get to add one intelligence or wisdom to a rune attempt. All right, we can now take our reward, and we know that we excelled in our studies. That means we can tuck this right along the top, and we now have two of these Arcana icons, so we are already at the two bonus points, and we are very motivated to get two more of those to get to the eight bonus points by the end of the game. That also adds one to our intelligence. That's kind of funny. Both of the first two cards we took added one of those Arcana icons and one intelligence, so we're definitely a pretty smart hunter. Now, we also picked up this animal companion, and down below it says that you may spend one experience or you can sacrifice this ally in order to gain one constitution until the end of the turn. This also adds one of the nature story icons, which is great, and I figure we'll put this down right over here. And then when it comes to the uh, hero and anti-hero cards that we've played, let's just tuck them over here so that we can tell. I'll tuck this one as well. Uh, we can see the various uh, trials and tribulations we went through, and we can also see how many triumph and tragedy points we have banked already. All right, I think we are done with our actions which means we can finish our turn by drawing another Act 1 card. And this is a trait. It says Foundling. You gain one hero card and three triumph points at the end of the game. And it looks like when you gain this, you also go up once on your corruption track. So we can add this right over here, and now the green player can go. Once they've looked over the options, the green player decides they want to gain a trait, and in particular, they want to be a foundling. So they can add this right over here. There are no restrictions, in fact. It says that when you gain this, you go up once on your corruption track, and then they can add this right over here, and that also allows them to pick up another one of these hero cards. They already had one in their hand, so now they have two of these, and they have gained three triumph for the end of the game. And it looks like that's the only action they want to take which means they can finish their turn by drawing another card, and that is going to be a childhood friend. Now, this is another ally, which means they have to tuck it underneath a face-up challenge, and we can see over here that adds one justice story icon to the person who takes it, and it also says you can spend one experience or sacrifice this ally once you have them to gain one charisma until the end of their turn. Green gets to decide where this goes, and they have decided to tuck it under the Cruel Winter. That means they have to draw again, and the next Act 1 card is going to be Preparing for War. The options are Plan the City's Defenses, which gets, uh, gets you one Noble Story Icon as well as an Intelligence, or you can Build Fortifications, which gets you a Hero Card as well as a Strength. It's now time for the blue player to go, and they want to face a challenge. Now it appears they are not deterred by the fact that this is a 5 instead of a 4, and with this Cruel Winter they can either steal to survive, or they can forage for food, and the bottom one is the one they want to go for. The next thing Blue has to do is build out their rune pool. They of course start with the three basic ones, and this Cruel Winter matches up with Constitution as well as Dexterity. Now they don't have any dexterity right now, but they do have two constitution. That means they can add both of these into their pool. And at this point, they have decided they do want to spend one of their experience points, and that will add a dark rune into this pool. All right, let's see how blue does. And it looks like that went pretty well. These are both two, and then all three of these are ones. They actually got up to seven. Uh, they only needed five, so this dark rune was not necessary, although it didn't flip over to the moon side, which would have lowered their corruption track. Either way, they have more than overcome this challenge, which means they can add this childhood friend ally right down here. And then, of course, they forged for food, so they can tuck this like that. 
They have now gained another constitution, so they have three constitution right now. Uh, perhaps they are pigeonholing themselves a little bit on this attribute because it does not make sense to have more than three, but that is going to give them a second nature story icon, which is likely one of the things they were going for. Of course, there is also this justice icon down here that they liked. Blue is now done with their actions, so they're going to finish their turn by drawing another Act 1 card. Uh, this is a challenge. It says you get lost in the woods. It applies towards dexterity as well as the wisdom trait. And this is actually a 3 to accomplish. We've only seen 4 so far, but 3 is also an option. Now, up along top, you have escaping your pursuers in the woods, and that adds one to your dexterity for the rest of the game. The other option is you can add plus one to that, which we certainly like the looks of, and you can find a place of power, and that gives you one wisdom as well as a hero card. Okay, we can now take our next turn, although I just realized that on the last turn, when we successfully excelled in our studies, we did actually get one wisdom to show up on a rune. That means we should have gained an experience, so I'm just going to add this right over here, and now we can look over here and see that we have two cards tucked. Now, as I said, you go on to the next act as soon as you have three tucked cards, so that means we are going to continue to stay in the first act for at least one more turn, and let's take a look at our options. Well, it appears there is one trait and three challenges that we could face. This trait over here is we could be an orphan that would give us an anti-hero card, which we would not be able to play right now. It would also give us two tragedy points for the end of the game. And it says that when you gain this, you actually have to gain a corruption and then get two experience. Now, gaining a corruption would actually put us into a situation where we could play that anti-hero card, but I'm not sure if we necessarily want to go there right now. Now, as far as these challenges are concerned, we can see that Lost in the Woods is going to be uh, uh, faced with um, the Dexterity and Wisdom. This Street Fighting wants Dexterity and Strength. And lastly, Prepare for War has Intelligence and Strength. Now, at the moment, we have two Intelligence. We have one Wisdom and one Dexterity. And we have to remember that our Hidden Destiny card is going to give us plus one Triumph Point at the end of the game for every Strength and Wisdom icon in our area. Now we do also have an ally to keep in mind. This animal companion allows us to spend an experience or sacrifice this ally to get one constitution, but right now it looks like nothing actually cares about that. Now I think what we should probably do is let's try to prepare for war. In particular, let's build fortifications, because if we are successful, that will give us one strength, and that will apply for the bonus when it comes to being the people's champion. Next up, we can build out our rune pool. We know that in order to prepare for war, we can use our intelligence as well as our strength. Now we can look over here and see that we have two intelligence. We, of course, also get the three basic runes. So we can go in here and we're going to use all but the uh, special uh, third intelligence marker. We can add these into our spot, but right now it looks like this uh, dexterity and wisdom are not going to help us out. Now with that in mind, we could use this brilliant plan right here. Uh, it'll give us one triumph point at the end of the game, and it says that we can play this alongside a challenge, and it will add an extra in, uh, intelligence or a wisdom to that attempt. Now if we did this, we would actually bring in this one right here, uh, but it, it's, it's nice, but when you consider the fact that it has a plus two on one side and a zero on the other, that does give you a hero card. Well, it's not quite as good as the other uh, intelligence bonuses where this is two or one. So right now, I don't think we necessarily have enough runes to make this make sense, and I think that maybe we should hold on to this for the future. The last thing that we should consider involves potentially spending our experience to cast dark runes. Now obviously we are born lucky, and using this ability allows us to flip over a dark rune that we cast, although that does cost experience. So we could spend one of these and then potentially have the other experience to flip it over to a side that we want. But I don't know, I think maybe we should just risk it. Uh, getting to four is uh, definitely a possibility with the runes that we have right now. And if we don't end up actually getting this, it's not uh, the end of the world. We'll get one experience to kind of counteract that. And I don't want to spend uh, everything on this Act 1 card and then have no experience as we go into Act 2 where the challenges are going to be even harder to face. So let's push our luck a little bit. At this point, there's nothing left to do but to cast the runes, and it looks like that did not go well at all for us. We have just two towards the four that we needed. Uh, we did get this bonus, which lets us draw a hero or anti-hero card. So I figure let's just draw a hero card. And then we, of course, did fail this challenge. So as a consolation prize, we do get to get uh, one experience, but then this card will be discarded. 
Now, the hero card that we picked up says Dazzling Wit, and it says we can play this before we attempt a challenge, and it can add an extra charisma or intelligence to that uh, challenge. So I guess we can just add this into our brilliant plan in our hand, and maybe we should have spent some of our experience to try and make this uh, more likely to succeed, but it just did not seem like a good plan for us. So uh, we are instead going to just uh, end our turn by gaining one experience and that one hero card, and next turn we'll try to do better. So we can now draw another Act 1 card at the end of our turn, and this is a challenge. It says, Missing Person. The options are you can find a lost child. That will give one story icon for nature and a wisdom. Or you can climb to safety, and this gives a hero card and a strength. So the green player can now take their turn. After looking at their options, they've decided they want to face this Lost in the Woods challenge. Now, when it comes to the options, they're going to go with the escaping your pursuer's path. They are not super confident in uh, being able to complete this one, and they definitely don't want to add plus one to the difficulty. Next up, green is going to activate their apprentice. Remember, this can be used once per turn when they attempt an intelligence or dexterity challenge, and there is dexterity on this challenge, so that means they can spend one of their experience, and that will allow them to draw a hero card. They can add this into their hand, and now we can see that Lost in the Woods also applies towards Wisdom. So they can start building out their rune set, and we can see over here that they have one Dexterity, one Intelligence, and one Constitution. So right now, the only thing they get to add into this is that one Dexterity. Overall, they're not feeling too great about this just yet. They, of course, get their three basic runes when they build out their rune pool, and then the one for Dexterity. So they decided they want to play this Hero card. Now this says Surprise Attack, and it can add one Strength or one Dexterity to the Rune Pool. So they're going to go ahead and pull out another one of these Dexterities. And then of course they can tuck this under their board, because this card is going to be worth one Triumph Point to them at the end of the game. They can also spend their experience to cast these Dark Runes, but they are going to again avoid doing that, and I think they are happy with this Rune Pool. Part of this is because you'll remember their motivation is they're bound by honor, and they gain experience when they defeat a challenge by one or less. So they don't want to go too crazy by blowing this out, and they only need to get to three anyway. So it's now time for them to cast the runes, and they have done more than enough. Oh my gosh. They get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was the highest cast they could possibly do. So they absolutely obliterate this challenge right here, and they of course will not get any bonus for Bound by Honor because they are way more than one away from that threshold. So this means they are successful, though. They escape their pursuers, and they get to gain that one dexterity. And they can show that by tucking this card right along there. At this point, green is done with their actions. So green can now end their turn by drawing another Act 1 card, and they have found an ally. So this is a Cruel Master. It adds plus one to the difficulty of the challenge it is associated with, of course, because you have to add this into one of those. It adds one Tragedy Point at the end of the game, if you still have it, as well as one of these Villainy Story Icons. And then down below, you can sacrifice this ally to gain one on your Corruption Track. So you can actually become more virtuous by getting rid of your Cruel Master. And of course, you will get rid of the Story Icon and the Triumph Point if you do that. Now the green player has to associate this with one of the face-up challenges, and they're going to put that one under the missing person slot, and then they can draw another card for this spot right here, and that one is going to be a trait. This is Brave. It adds one justice story icon and a strength, and you can only take this one if you have a strength or if you spend an experience. All right, the blue player can now take their turn, and it looks like they want to keep things simple, and they're just going to take this Brave trait. Now they can only take this if they spend an experience or if they have a strength. And unfortunately for them, they don't currently have any strength icons. They could spend an experience to gain one, but of course, they could just spend an experience to gain this trait. So they're going to get rid of this experience right here, and they can then tuck this Brave right underneath their Adventurous up there. They have now gained another one of these Justice Story icons. Remember, they already have one from their childhood friend. And then they also have gained a strength for the rest of the game. At this point, Blue is done with their actions. They're going to finish their turn by drawing another card, and that is a trait. This says Spiritual, and it adds one Divinity Story icon as well as one Wisdom. And down below it says you may not gain this if you have any Tragedy Points in your tableau. So we can add this right over there. This means it's our turn again, and I think we have a pretty obvious choice. Now, this spiritual trait that just came out is something we could grab because we do not currently have any triumph points in front of us. None of the cards have it, and we have not played any anti-hero cards. Now, this is also extra good for us because it adds a wisdom, and we get one uh, triumph point for every wisdom we have at the end of the game. And this has a divinity story icon, which matches up with the divinity we get for our hidden People's Champion Destiny card right over here. 
Now remember, you get the maximum amount of points by having four of a given icon at the end of the game. So getting to the second one is certainly a good way to build towards that. Also, you get no points at the end of the game for one icon, but you do get two points for the second. So this is definitely a good thing to work towards. We can now tuck this right over here, and we've effectively uh, finished out our first act. We are a studious hunter who excelled in our studies, and we are quite spiritual as well. And I think that's going to finish out our actions. We did not uh, obviously do any challenges, so neither of these cards will come into play. And it does not make sense to play either of these uh, hero cards that we have either. So, yeah, we are done with our actions. Which means we can end our turn by drawing an Act 1 card and putting it right over here. Now this is a trait, it says Secret Royalty, it adds one Royalty Story icon as well as a Charisma, and you may only gain this one if you discard a Hero card or if you spend an experience. Alright, it's now the green player's turn, and you'll notice that they are the first ones to start their turn with three cards tucked underneath their origin. Now this means they are going to essentially unlock the second act of the game, and that will allow the second act cards to be available for all players. The way this works is the green player will now reveal all of these Act 2 cards that have been faced down throughout the game. We can see we have a few different options, and the first thing to point out is there is one ally. We can see it is a sidekick. They add one Justice Story icon and a Triumph point if you have them, and once you have them, you can spend an Experience point or sacrifice this ally to gain one Dexterity until the end of your turn. Now, just like all of the other allies we've seen, the green player now gets to decide to uh, tuck this under one of the face-up challenges, and they're going to put it right over here under the street gang. Now we can see the street gang needs a 5 to defeat, although now that is a 6, and the options for this one says you can outwit a gang boss. This will add one of the justice story icons, so that actually would potentially double up on that icon, which would be good. It also adds two triumph points as well as an intelligence, and the other path is you could take over the gang. You get one of the villainy story icons, a tragedy point, and a charisma. Now there is one other type of card that we just showed that's new uh, for the game so far, and that is an adversary. We can see this says the Warlock, and if you are able to overcome this challenge, you gain one Arcana Story Icon, three Triumph Points, and an Intelligence. Now the thing about adversaries is they are essentially super challenges. They only have one option instead of the two to pick from, and they have a uh, some special rules that might persist throughout the game while they're face up, or special bonuses you get when you actually defeat them. In this case, we can see that for the Warlock, when you attempt this challenge, you can discard a uh, one of your anti-hero cards to gain plus one to the overall challenge as you're trying to get up to six. At this point, we do have a vacant spot on the second act row, so let's draw another card from the top of the deck, and this is going to be a trait. It says Enlightened, it adds one Nature Story icon, and you also get one hero card when you take this, and a Wisdom. Now down below it says you may only gain this if you have a Wisdom and a Strength, or if you spend two experience. It's now time for Green to start taking their actions, but before we go into those, I would like to explain that whenever a player has a full up character card slot, they move into the next act as a character as well. That means the Green player is in the second act, and that means they are not allowed to ever take any of these first act cards anymore. Now it's also worth noting that it's possible that we could have still been in a situation where we just had two of these cards in our area on our next turn. If that had happened, then we would have to put the next card we take underneath our current card, which is our origin, but since these second act cards are revealed, we could have hypothetically drawn one of these and tucked it underneath our origin. Either way, that isn't going to happen because we do have three here as well, and that means that all three of the players are in the second act, and that means that effectively we won't be interacting with any of these Act 1 cards again. So Green can start taking their actions, and they're going to start off by facing this Street Gang's challenge. Now they could either try to outwit the gang boss, or they could try to take over the gang, and they're going to go with the first one of these. When we come back over here to their area, they are going to spend one of their experience to activate their apprentice. This again can only happen if there is an intelligence or dexterity in a challenge they're facing, and there is an intelligence right there. So they can get rid of this one and draw a hero card, and now they're going to build out their rune pool. We can see that they only care about their charisma as well as their intelligence. And when we look at their options, we can see they currently have one intelligence, so they can add that right over here, and unfortunately they don't have any charisma at this point. Now they of course get their three basic runes right here, and they have decided they want to play this hero card. 
This one is a brilliant plan, and it allows them to add an intelligence or a wisdom rune to their pool. So in this case, they are going to obviously add an intelligence right over here, and then they can tuck this, so that's one more triumph point for them at the end of the game. At this point, there's nothing left for them to do but to cast the runes, and it looks like they got one, two, three, four, five. So they were just one away from getting up to that. In fact, they're the ones who put this sidekick on this challenge, so they made that probably a little bit too challenging for them, unfortunately. Now, that means they are not going to be successful. That's not great for them, I suppose, but they do get the option of drawing a hero card or an anti-hero card. And it looks like they're going to take a hero card in this case. And then, of course, they were not able to successfully uh, face this challenge. So that means both of these cards are discarded and they do get one experience as a consolation prize. Now, this certainly didn't seem like a good turn for the green player so far, but there is this rags to riches trait out here on the board. Now, we can look down at the specifics of the bottom, and it says that if you lost a challenge this turn, you may spend one experience to gain this. And this is part of the reason why the green player decided to try and go for this. And they do have this one experience they just got for losing that challenge. So they're going to get rid of this, and that will allow them to take this trait. That's going to get them one more hero card. They have just tons of these at the moment, and it will also give them two triumph points at the end of the game. Next up, they have to tuck this trait, and that's going to go underneath their current hero card. Green is done with their actions, so they can finish their turn by drawing cards, and the first one of these is a trait. Now this says Vengeful, and it adds a Justice Story icon as well as a Constitution, but down below we can see you can only take this if you have two or more Corruption. Now at the moment, we have one Virtue, the green player has a Virtue, and the blue player is neutral, so nobody is even close to being able to claim this one yet. So far, we have not been spending that much experience to roll those Dark Runes, and the Dark Runes are a big way that you can become more corrupt. Now, the green player has to draw another card for this spot here, and that one is a challenge. It says the Frozen Peak. There are two paths. We have Climbing the Summit. That gives two Triumph Points and a Constitution. And then down below, there is you can find some Lost Wisdom, and that gives an Arcana Story Icon a Hero Card as well as a Wisdom Attribute. All right, the blue player can now take their turn. And it looks like the first thing they want to do is face this new challenge that just popped up. Uh, it has Constitution and Wisdom, which are two things the blue player is very well oriented to try and challenge. And they're going to try to find some Lost Wisdom. Let's now come over to their player area so they can build out their rune pool. Now obviously they get the three basic runes. And then when it comes to Wisdom, they have just one of those attributes. So they can add one of these to their pool. But then for Constitution, they have one, two, three. That means they get all three of these runes, including this one right here, which is the one you can only get if you have three or more runes. On one side, they could get plus two towards the challenge, and on the other side, this would give them nothing towards the challenge, but it would give them an experience. Now, they're going to add this right over here, and they have decided they're not going to spend any of their experience to uh, cast some dark runes. They feel pretty confident about getting to five for this one. Well, there's nothing left for them to do but to cast the runes, and that went pretty well for them. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So they went one over what they needed, and they did not get the plus two for this, but they do get an experience. And considering they already have more uh, points than they need to achieve this challenge, they definitely like the idea of gaining a bonus experience right there. So it looks like they were successful in finding this Lost Wisdom. And that means they can tuck this right under here, and that has given them their first Arcana Story icon. It also gives them one Hero card they can add into their hand, and they gained another Wisdom. At this point, Blue feels like they are done with their actions, so they're going to finish out their turn by drawing another Act 2 card. And this is a trait. It says Criminal. Uh, it adds one Villainy Story icon as well as a Dexterity. And then down below, you can only gain this if you already have a Villainy icon, or if you spend an experience. All right, we can now take our next turn, and just like both of our opponents, we have just entered into the second act ourselves because we have three cards tucked underneath our origin, so let's take a look at the options for us. Well, at this point, there are three traits and one adversary available for us to choose from. Now, this Enlightenment trait would be nice. It adds one of the story uh, nature icons, and we already have one uh, from our animal companion. Again, when you have two of an icon, then that's worth two points at the end of the game, and it gets better as you achieve more of these. So getting that would be nice, as well as a hero card and a wisdom. But the problem is that right now, we do have a wisdom, but we don't have any strength. 
Now, that's a little surprising considering we get bonus points for wisdom and strength, but so far in the game, we have not had an opportunity to gain strength, and I don't think we want to spend two out of our three experiences to pick up this trait. Now, over here, we have Vengeful, and obviously we have a Virtue, and that means we are three uh, corruption points uh, too high in order to actually pick up this trait. And then lastly, with Criminal, we could spend one experience for it, but I don't think it necessarily works out that well for us. We don't have any villainy story icons just yet to really uh, go off of, so that just leaves the Warlock. Now, this is an adversary, which again is effectively a challenge, but we are pretty well geared up to take them on. We have a couple intelligence, and we do have wisdom as well, a couple of it, so I think we should be able to get to the six if we need to, and more importantly, this would provide us with one Arcana story icon. We currently have two of those in our area, so this would be our third, and that means we would go from two up to four victory points if we had this, plus three triumph points, which is just straight points at the end of the game, and more intelligence. Now, unfortunately for us, we don't have any anti-hero cards to discard to try and to make this easier, but I still think this is what we should do. This means we can start building out our rune pool, so let's take our three basic runes, and then for the wisdom, we can look out and see that we have two of those, so we can take two of these wisdom runes, and that's pretty good because remember, for every side that shows up with this symbol, uh, we will get one experience, so uh, rolling multiple of these is definitely a good thing for us. And then for intelligence, we can look over here and see that we have two of those, that means we get to cast both of these as well. Now, we know that we want to hit six or more when it comes to defeating this challenge, and with that in mind, we do have the option of maybe spending some of our hero cards and also experience for these dark runes, but let's go ahead and figure out if we want to do that. Now, let's talk numbers. In fact, the rulebook has a nice handy-dandy graph at the back of it. It tells you things like the fact that when you cast the three basic runes, the average result for those is going to be 1.5, and then it also says that for every additional rune or dark rune, you get another 1.5. 1.5 added to the average, and then every one of these special runes, which are these third ones here, that only adds one to the overall average. Now this means that over here we get one and a half average for our basic runes, and then we have four of the regular runes, which is one and a half each. So that's effectively one and a half, three, then four and a half, six, and then seven and a half uh, is what we are currently looking at as far as an average is concerned. Now, seven and a half is indeed higher than six, but that is just an average. And when we look at the hero cards we have, this brilliant plan is uh, uh, starting to become less and less useful. It adds one intelligence or one wisdom, and we are currently at two intelligence and two wisdom. But if we are successful, we will be at three intelligence, and there will be no way to add extra runes to our area. We also know that we are trying to uh, get more of these wisdom icons, so it's very likely uh, pretty soon we won't even have a decent option to use this. So we could spend this one, and that is a good thing to do because obviously that gets us one triumph point at the end of the game. But we could also hold on to this to potentially add one wisdom later on and use our experience to roll a dark rune, which would add one and a half. That would bring us from seven and a half up to nine, which is uh, far ahead of six, so much more likely, in addition to the fact that we could spend our experience to flip a dark rune over. Now, on top of all of those factors, we do know that this vengeful trait exists. Uh, we can only take this if we have two or more of our corruption, and that would mean being all the way down here. The big way that you become corrupt is by casting these dark runes. However, I suppose this trait is not particularly great for us. We don't have any of this... Uh, uh, justice story icon at the moment. So let's just go with this plan of using a brilliant plan that will allow us to cast a uh, additional intelligence or wisdom. And I think we should definitely go with wisdom because wisdom has the ability to get us more experience. Now, obviously this only adds plus one. So we went from seven and a half up to eight and a half as an average. And I think that's probably going to be good enough for us. At this point, there's nothing left to do but cast all of these runes, and that went out pretty good. Uh, we can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's one more than we needed, and it was a little close, but I think we're uh, totally fine with that. This is going to allow us to draw a hero or anti-hero card. And at the moment, we are still virtuous, which means we cannot actually use any of those anti-hero cards. So let's draw another hero card into our hand. This is a narrow escape, and this one would allow us to add a uh, dexterity or constitution rune to an attempt. Uh, that is certainly good, considering we are pretty weak on both of those attributes right now. And then we can see that we have at least one wisdom showing up, and that means our hunter ability will activate, and that is going to get us one extra experience. 
All right, we can now take our reward of sliding the Warlock right under there, and that has given us our third Arcana symbol, three Triumph, as well as our third Intelligence. At this point, I think we're done with our actions, so we can finish out our turn by drawing an Act 2 card, and this one is a challenge. This is a Daring Heist. There is Stealing from the Rich, which adds a Justice Story icon, an Anti-Hero card, as well as a Dexterity. And then down below, there is Give to the Poor. This adds one to the difficulty, which makes that a six, but it also adds a Divinity Story icon, two Triumph Points, and a Charisma. So it's now the green player's turn, and it's worth noting that they have a big hand of these hero cards because they keep using their apprentice, but they currently don't have any experience. Now this is important because as an action on a player's turn, they can go on a journey. You can spend one experience as an action to discard a card from the player area and then draw a new card from that same act. The green player would kind of like to do that right now because they don't love these options, but they have no experience available to themselves. So instead, they are going to attempt this challenge right here. Uh, they don't have the experience to take this or this, and they don't have the corruption levels to pick up Vengeful. So realistically, this is their only real option this turn. The next thing the green player has to do is choose their path, and they are going to try to give back to the poor. Now, this is a little risky for them because they aren't super solid on the uh, attributes they need, but they really want this divinity icon and the triumph points. So we can look over here and see they can add up their charisma and their dexterity, but unfortunately at the moment they have no charisma, but they do have two dexterity. So they can, of course, add these three basic runes right over here, which will give them plus one and a half uh, to their overall average. They can also add these two dexterity runes, and that's one and a half and one and a half. So right now they are at four and a half. Now, they need to get to six uh, to realistically be at the average of where they want to go. And because of that, they're going to start spending some of their hero cards. They have a bunch of these, and they've decided they want to play two. This top one right here is Divine Favor. This one can add a Wisdom or a Charisma to the Rune Pool, and the Charisma is going to be the one that works out. And the other one is a Surprise Attack. This one adds a Strength or a Dexterity, and unfortunately, when they add the Dexterity to this, it's going to be this Special Rune. One side gives an Anti-Hero card, which they honestly don't want, and the other side does give a 2. So overall, that is going to be their uh, Rune Pool, and they have just banked two more Triumph Points for themselves at the end of the game. There's nothing left for the green player to do but cast the runes, and it appears they got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that is more than the 6 that they needed. That worked out really well for them. Uh, this right here is going to allow them to draw a hero or an anti-hero card, and they are definitely going to go with a hero card because they are virtuous and they cannot play those anti-hero cards, and then they are successful in giving back to the poor. Overall, that went very well for them. They were not super confident that would work, uh, but unfortunately, their Bound by Honor is not going to activate because they only get an experience if they overcome a challenge by one or less, and they overcame that challenge by two. <laughs> so it worked out well for them, but uh, not the uh, most perfect evaluation for them. But either way, the green player is now done with their actions. And this means they can end their turn by drawing another Act 2 card, and this one is a Murder Mystery Challenge. We can see one option is you could solve a mystery to get a justice icon, a triumph point, and a wisdom. And the other one is you could add plus one to the difficulty and conceal your crime so you were the murderer. That adds one villainy as well as two of the uh, tragedy points and an intelligence. All right, the blue player can now take their turn. And they've decided they want to face this murder mystery right away. Now between these two options, they're going to go with solving the mystery because this one gives a justice story icon and the blue player already has two of those icons, so they definitely like the idea of getting the third. The next thing they can do is build out their rune pool. They obviously get to add these three basic runes right here and then they can add their intelligence and their wisdom. Now at the moment, they have no intelligence, but they do have two wisdom, so they can add both of these into their pool, and they have decided uh, they're not going to be playing any of their uh, hero cards, unfortunately, but they are instead going to be spending two of their experience, and that will add two of these dark runes to their pool. Now, this might seem like a bit of an overcommitment with their experience, but I'll tell you right now, the blue player is interested in becoming more corrupt, and this is one of the main ways you can become more corrupt. So they're going to throw these out, and that worked really well for them. Uh, both of these are going to add two, so that's one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. They needed five, so they definitely got to the eight, and both of these are going to lower their corruption by one. This means they will go down one, two, and unfortunately, they are no longer able to play either of these hero cards that they currently have. 
They could play anti-hero cards, which they have not drawn just yet, but they are now uh, able to draft this Vengeful trait on their next turn. It required two or more of those symbols, and you can see this has a justice icon, and the uh, thing they just got has a justice icon, and that uh, Vengeful would be their fourth justice icon, which is worth four additional points. So overall, they're pretty happy with how this went. They, of course, have to tuck this right down over here. Blue is now done with their actions, so they can end their turn by drawing another Act 2 card. And this is a uh, challenge. It says Guard Duty. You can either watch over the city to get a Royalty Story icon and a Wisdom, or you can add one to the difficulty there and catch a Criminal, which will give a Justice, a Triumph, as well as a Dexterity. Alright, let's now take our next turn. And I think for our main action, let's face this challenge. Uh, the other three options were still out there on our last turn. So far, we've all been kind of dodging these traits out here. Now, we could spend one of our experience to discard one of these to draw a new card. But I think that this challenge is pretty good for us. It's a uh, guard duty right here. And I figure if we went down here and did the plus one, then we would get plus one point at the end of the game because our people's champion gives us benefits for that. But this also gives us an extra point if we have a wisdom or a strength, and the top part right here would give a wisdom. Now, overall, the bottom would also give a triumph, which would help out as well, and I think that we should be able to get to five. So let's go ahead and try to catch a criminal. Next up, let's build out our rune pool. We get these three basic runes right here, and then we have dexterity and wisdom that will apply. We can look out here and see we have currently one dexterity, and then we have two wisdom, and that's really great because if we get a dexterity or a wisdom, we can get another experience from our hunter skill. Uh, so let's add those two wisdom right over here. Now the challenge level that we need to meet is 4 plus 1 or 5, and our averages down here is currently 1.5, 3, 4.5, 6. So we're just one, uh, this is just one below the overall average, and I think maybe we should just spend one of our experience. This is a point that we would be giving up uh, in order to uh, use one of these dark runes, but I don't know if we really want to chance it. I guess maybe it doesn't make sense. I mean, I do want to use, uh, have the ability to use our Born Lucky ability, but spending a victory point at this point probably doesn't make sense. We are, um, the average is slightly above this, and if we miss, I suppose we will just get an experience point. It's not the end of the world. So, yeah, we'll, we'll push our luck. This means it's time to cast the runes, and we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm glad we did not spend any extra victory points there, and we got at least one of these Wisdoms, so our uh, Hunter ability will activate. That's going to get us an experience, and we're definitely starting to have a uh, pretty big amount of those in our area. We don't have a lot of ways to spend it. This Born Lucky is potentially really nice in the right moment. We just haven't really found that moment just yet, and it isn't a bad thing to hoard these experience points for end-of-the-game scoring. So we were able to successfully catch that criminal. We've got an extra bonus point at the end of the game because of that plus one. We now have a justice symbol, which we could try to find more of, although that might be kind of hard considering the blue player has been uh, taking so many of them so far. And we got a dexterity. We have two of those now, so I think overall that was a pretty good turn for us, and I don't think we have any more actions. So let's end it by drawing another Act 2 card, and this is going to be another trait. We're seeing lots of traits in Act 2 here. Uh, this is Honorable. It adds a Royalty Story icon and a Strength, and you may only gain this one if you have a Royalty icon or if you spend an experience. Okay, the green player can now take their turn. But unfortunately for them, right now, the only cards that are available for them are traits, and they can't even journey because they don't have any experience. Now, in the rare case where this happens, and it's happening right now, where you don't have the experience to journey and you cannot take any of these cards, you do get a free journey action. So this means the green player can discard any of these, and they're going to be mean. They're going to discard this Vengeful right here. They can see that the blue player would really like it to get that extra justice icon, so this is now going to be gone, and the green player can now draw another card, and this one is another trait. Uh, this says Inventive, it adds an Arcana symbol, you also get an Anti-Hero card and an Intelligence, and you may only gain this one if you have Intelligence and Dexterity, or if you spend two experience. Well, we can see over here that the green player actually started with an intelligence and a dexterity with their apprentice. So they are definitely inventive. That makes sense. So this is going to be the card they take. They can slide this in right over here. And now that is going to give them an anti-hero card. Now, unfortunately, they cannot actually play this one at the moment, but they're going to leave it in their hand. Green is now at the end of their turn, so they're going to draw another Act 2 card. And this one is a challenge. It says uh, Trench Warfare. 
you can either lead an attack, which adds a royalty uh, icon, a hero card, and a strength, or you can tend to the injured, which gives you a divinity story icon, a triumph point, as well as a wisdom. All right, Blue can now take their turn, and they are definitely bummed that they cannot be vengeful. Uh, they really liked that card, and they may be overcommitted to trying to get it. But either way, they can now take their actions, and it does appear that this enlightened trade still works out pretty well for them. They can only get this if they spend two experience or if they have a wisdom and a strength. And they do indeed have both of those attributes, so they can slide this one right over here. They are now enlightened. This is going to give one nature story icon to them, which is certainly good. They have three of those already, so uh, they've gone from two to four points at the end of the game. This also gets them a hero card, which is a little unfortunate. They can't actually play hero cards. They are too corrupt at this point, so they definitely probably overcommitted to trying to go down on that track. Maybe that was a mistake for them. They have three of these hero cards that they cannot play. They haven't played any hero cards this game at all, actually, so uh, we'll see how this works out for them. But either way, that is going to be all of of their benefits, and they of course also got one more wisdom. So they have four wisdom at this point. Blue is now going to end their turn by drawing an Act 2 card, and this is a challenge. There is a Corrupt Official, and you can either pay a bribe, which gives an anti-hero card, as well as a Charisma, or with plus one to the challenge, you can resist an arrest, getting you two of these uh, Triumph Points, as well as a Strength. This means it is now our turn. And I think we should engage in some trench warfare where we tend to the injured. This could be really good for us because it would give us a divinity symbol. It would be our third one. It would give a triumph symbol, and it would also give us a wisdom. And we get extra points for wisdom at the end of the game. So overall, we could do either of these because we also get an extra point for the strength. But I like the idea of getting another divinity symbol as we work towards that set. So let's build out our rune pool. We get our basic runes right here, and then strength and wisdom are going to be applied. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any strength at this point, but we do have, it looks like, two wisdom, so we can add these two into our pool. Now, when it comes to our other options, unfortunately, both of our hero cards don't give any benefits to this current challenge, and our animal companion adds constitution, and we don't need that one either. So I do think at the moment we should probably get some dark runes. These basic runes are getting us one and a half on average, and then these two up here is giving us uh, three on average. So we're at four and a half, and we need to get to five. So if we spend one of our experience, that'll get us a dark rune. Uh, we have now gone from four and a half up to six. And if we spend another one of these, that might be a little bit risky. It would be really nice to uh, succeed in this challenge, though. So I don't know if I want to risk it. So let's spend the experience. We do have it. That'll get us another one of these. And I guess in a worst-case scenario, if we get too many of these corruption symbols, we could spend our experience to flip it over with our bad luck to try and mitigate how corrupt we become. Either way, I think this is going to be our rune pool. So let's cast our runes. And overall, that went pretty well for us. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We needed five, so we had more than enough. And now the question comes in of, do we want both of these corruption sides to pop up here? Uh, maybe we have overcommitted with these dark runes as well. And we could spend one of our experience to use our born lucky ability to flip one of these over. That means we would only go over, uh, go down once instead of twice. I guess the difference between these two is uh, nothing at the end of the game. Uh, this is two triumph points, and this is two tragedy points. It is worth noting that there are some cards in the game that uh, give benefits for triumph versus tragedy points, and there are also cards that just negate all triumph or tragedy points that you might have at the end of the game. But as far as we are concerned, these are pretty similar, so I think let's not use Born Lucky. We'll just become a little bit corrupt going down here, we can still cast the uh, use the hero cards, and we now have the ability to use anti-hero cards. Now with that in mind, we did get a bonus of drawing a card, and we've seen lots of hero cards this game so far, but let's draw an anti-hero card now that we can play them. Uh, the one that we have found says tap into darkness. It gives a tragedy point at the end of the game, but again, all of the anti-hero cards will do that. And then down below it says you play this one on another hero when they are attempting a challenge. You can choose one rune of a type you possess and remove it from their attempt. So we could really mess up one of our opponents on their turns by playing this one. We did get one more benefit, and that's because we were able to cast a Wisdom, so our Hunter ability will activate, getting us another experience. We certainly have had no experience problems this game so far. We can now finish out this action by tucking this underneath our character card, and we now have three cards tucked underneath our motivation. Uh, so do both of our opponents, it's worth noting, and what this means is we have now finished out our second act of the game. 
I think at this point we are done with our actions, so we can reveal another Act 2 card, and this is an adversary. It's the Wolf, and they give four Triumph points and a Constitution, and down here you can see that if you are able to defeat the Wolf, you get to gain one Virtue, but unfortunately at the moment it looks like all of the players have now finished Act 2, so nobody will actually be interacting with any of these cards again. All right, it's the green player's turn, and just like before, it looks like they are the first player to have a turn starting in Act 3, so they can now reveal all of the Act 3 cards. These have been hanging out up here all game long, and the first one is a challenge. It says Trial of the Magi, and you can only use intelligence for this. Well, that's good news for us, because we do have quite a bit of intelligence so far, and this, you only need to get to 5 for it, but only one icon makes that more difficult. Now you can either slay the Archmage to take an anti-hero card, get 3 tragedy points and an intelligence, or you can do a test at 6 and actually become the Archmage. This gives 5 triumph points and an Arcana uh, story icon. Next up, we have another uh, challenge. This says Dragon's Horde. You can use your strength and dexterity, and you need to get to seven. You can either steal the treasure and get a hero card, three triumph points, and a dexterity, or you could do this fight at an eight and actually slay this dragon, which will give a royal icon for triumph points and a strength. Moving on, we have a trait. This one says Supernatural. You get a nature story icon and three tragedy points, but down below it says you may only gain this if you have uh, Constitution and Charisma, or if you have played three anti-hero cards. Now, strangely enough, so far this game, nobody has played any anti-hero cards just yet, but I imagine we might see a couple of those happen before the end of the game. And the last of these cards is going to be another challenge. Uh, actually, no, this is an adversary. It says the demon. Now, if you slay the demon, you get a divinity icon, which we definitely like the look of. You get six triumph points and an intelligence. You can use intelligence and dexterity, but you have to get to eight. And this is tricky. It says you may not play hero or anti-hero cards during your turn when you attempt this challenge. Since the green player is in their third act, they can only choose from these cards. And they're going to start things off strong by facing the demon. To a certain extent, this demon negates the green player's advantage because they have by far and away drawn the majority of these hero cards all game long. They certainly played more than the rest of us, and they have a bunch in their hand. But again, they are not allowed to use those against the demon. Now, fortunately for the green player, they do have a decent amount of attributes for fighting them. Uh, right from the get-go, they of course get the three basic runes, and then their intelligence and dexterity will come into play. Well, if we look out here, they have one, two dexterity, so they get both of these. And then they also have two intelligence, so they'll get those two runes as well. As I said before, the demon does not let them use any cards, and the green player continues to have no experience, so they don't even have a chance of using these dark runes. So this will be the set they get to use. There's nothing left to do but to see how the green player fares against the demon, and they got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they were just one shy from defeating the demon. That is a, definitely a bummer for them. Uh, they did get a consolation prize here, though, I suppose. They can take either a hero card or an anti-hero card. And it's no surprise to see them draw another hero card, considering they can't actually play anti-hero cards right now. Now, unfortunately for the green player, they're just going to get an experience as a uh, uh, reward, I guess, for this trial. Uh, they were not able to overcome it, though, so this demon is going to get discarded, and we are pretty bummed about that. We were hoping to fight them to try and get that divinity symbol, but the demon is now gone. So Green now does have an experience, which is nowhere near as good as having that demon card, but at this point, they are done with their actions which means they can finish out their turn by drawing another Act 3 card. Now, this one is another challenge. It says Imprisoned. You can use Constitution and your Dexterity for this, and you can either Plot Your Revenge, which gives a Justice icon, two Tragedy Points, and a Constitution, or you can add one to the difficulty and Escape to Freedom, which will give a Dexterity as well as four Triumph Points. It's now time for Blue to take their turn, and they are in Act 3 as well. When they come up here to pick a card, it's no surprise to see they want to go with this Imprisoned Challenge. Uh, they're going to definitely pick the top path, which is Plotting Revenge, and that's because it would potentially give them their fourth Justice Symbol, which would max them out at eight points at the end of the game. They, of course, have to overcome this, though. So they can now build out their Rune Pool. They'll use the three basic runes here, and then their Dexterity and Constitution will come into play. We can look out here and see that they don't actually have any dexterity, but they do have one, two, three constitution. So that will add all three of these into their pool. 
At this point, if they want to, they could spend their one experience to add a Dark Rune into the mix. However, if they roll that Dark Rune and it gives them a Corruption, they would drop down to here and they would go from 4 Tragedy Points to 0 Tragedy Points. So that's effectively a 4 point loss if they did that. And for them, it's not the end of the world if they miss this challenge. They do have this Outlander ability, which gives them a bonus to experience if a failed challenge is Constitution or Wisdom, and this is a Constitution challenge. So they're going to push their luck a little bit knowing that that the alternate option is not that bad for them. All right, let's see how they do. Ooh, that looks pretty nice for them. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, which is exactly what they needed to plot their revenge. In addition to that, they got this bonus, which allows them to draw a hero or anti-hero card. And right now the blue player can only play anti-hero cards due to how corrupt they are. So they're definitely gonna draw one of those from the top of the deck. They can now slide this right in over here, and they now officially have one, two, three, four of those Justice Icon symbols. That means they are going to get eight points at the end of the game for those, and if they get any more Justice Icon symbols, they will give them no further benefit. They've effectively finished out their Justice arc as a character. Blue is now done, so they can draw a card to finish their turn, and they have found another challenge. This says Demon Horde. You can use Intelligence and Strength for this. You have to get to 7, which is pretty high, and you can drive back a Demon Army. That'll give 1 Wisdom and 4 Triumph. Or you can wield the Sun's Light. This gives 1 Divinity Symbol, which is definitely something that we are interested in, and it will give 3 Triumph and a Strength as well. Overall, this is a very good uh, a challenge for us to try and overcome, in particular, the bottom option, but I'm not sure if we have the uh, skills necessary to get to 7 with Wisdom and Strength. Well, it is our turn, so let's take a look at our attributes and see how viable potentially trying to wield the Sun's Light would be for this challenge. Now, that one again is Wisdom and Strength, and unfortunately, we have picked up no Strength so far in this game, but we do have 1, 2, 3 Wisdom. That means we would be throwing the basic runes for a one and a half average uh, result, and then those three wisdom runes, and that would effectively be an extra four and a half, so that gets us to six, and six is not quite seven, and again, that six is just for an average. But there are, of course, other options that can help us out. Uh, unfortunately for us, our hero cards and our animal companion don't actually help out at all for strength or wisdom, but we do have four experience, and up to three times per turn, you can spend an experience to cast one of these dark runes. This really is the crux of this turn for us, I think. We want to see just how potentially corrupt we become as we are striving to wield the sun's light, because I really do think this is the card for us. Uh, we would get a divinity symbol, and we already have one to three of those, so this would be our fourth divinity symbol that would bring us from four to eight points at the end of the game and effectively finish our divinity arc, and it would also give us a strength, which gives us an extra point at the end of the game for our people's champion. So let's try to make this happen and bring out these runes. We of course get these three basic runes and then all three of these wisdom runes, as I already mentioned, and at this point, I think we need to spend our experience. Uh, we have a uh, Born Lucky attribute, which would allow us to manipulate these dark runes, which would uh, make it more likely for us to succeed here. And if you consider the fact that each one of these is effectively plus 1.5 to the overall average, and currently we are at 6, gunning for 7, then we should definitely spend one experience to put this into our pool. Our average is now 7.5, but when you consider the fact that we can spend an experience to make this a 2, then this is effectively a guaranteed 2 for us which means we just need to get to 5 with all of the rest of our runes. Now I know that I have overcommitted in the past, but I really do want to uh, succeed with this one, and when you consider the fact that our average over here right now is 6, and we would need to get to 5 because we are subtracting uh, 2 from that, I think that's a little too close. Let's spend one more of our experience to add another dark rune, and hopefully we don't become uh, corrupt twice. That would definitely uh, uh, put a big ding in the amount of points that we are trying to get this turn, but uh, we'll see how this plays out. We could of course spend experience to stop that from happening, but experience is also victory points, and we we are essentially wagering those to do our best to be successful. Well, it's now up to the fates, and let's see how we did. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, 
six, and that is not quite enough. Uh, this over here lets us draw a hero card, but I think at this point, maybe we should become more corrupt. We do have our born lucky ability. We can spend an experience to flip that over. We would then have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Although by doing that, we would be giving up one of our uh, experience points, which is a point, and becoming double corrupt would, would lose us uh, four more points. So by doing that, we lose five points overall. But in order to gain this, we go up four points just for this divinity and another point for this uh, strength right here. So it effectively balances out and we still net three triumph points positive by doing that action. So I think we should do it. We're going to spend this experience to flip this over and we are getting really corrupt in order to wield the sun's light. Uh, we're really sacrificing a lot to make this happen, but it is still worth points to us. I'm uh, pretty bummed that we got such a low roll over here, but this is how it's going to play out for us. So we now have the threshold to get to seven that we needed, and we're going to go down twice on this corruption track. So we very much cannot play either of our hero cards anymore. However, we did get this as a uh, consolation prize. It lets us draw a hero or anti-hero card, and we should definitely draw an anti-hero card considering how corrupt we are now. So let's draw that from the top of the deck, and we have found Fateful Choice. This says you can use this to either get plus one to an attempt if there is a tragedy point on it, or you get a uh, virtue if you are choosing a path that has a, uh, a triumph point on it. So this would actually allow us to dig ourselves out of this corruption a little bit. That is definitely a good card to have in our back pocket. The last things we get to consider is the fact that we did get one wisdom. And that's going to activate our hunter right here, and that's going to give us one experience. And then uh, this side was really not the side we wanted to see. Uh, that's going to give us one hero card, which we super can't play at the moment, but we can still add it into our hand. Oh, that's funny. It's deny the darkness. You can gain two virtue or choose another hero to gain one virtue. Um, that would be great for us, except we cannot play hero cards. We are too corrupt to actually wield this at this point, but... Maybe we'll be able to dig ourselves out to get this played before the game ends. The last thing we, of course, do is tuck this challenge, which we sacrificed so much to overcome. Uh, we successfully wielded the sun's light while becoming very corrupt in the process, and we could tuck this one right underneath there. At this point, I think we're done with our actions, so we can finish our turn by drawing a card. Uh, we found another challenge. This says Army of the Dead. You can use your Wisdom and Constitution to try and get to seven. The top option says you can pray for deliverance as this Army Undead uh, advances. That gives a Heroic card as well as three Triumph and a Wisdom. Or you can somehow survive the Horde. That gives one of the Nature Story icons three Triumph and a Constitution. At this point, the green player can now take their turn, and they do have an experience. So if they wanted to, they could journey and discard one of the cards. But they don't want to lose a point for doing that when something else not great for them might come up. So instead, they're just going to do what they're kind of kicking themselves for not doing last turn, and they're going to pick up this supernatural trait. It's going to give them one nature icon, which is their first nature icon, so that's not particularly good for them, but it does come with three triumph points. Now we can see they can only take this if they have played three anti-hero cards, which they certainly haven't, but they do have a constitution and a charisma. This means they can tuck this right under here, and that's going to be the only action they take this turn. They can finish things off by drawing another card, and this is a trait. It says Cursed. If you take this, you get one villainy symbol and two anti-hero cards, but it says you can only gain this if you have more of the tragedy symbols in your area than the triumph ones. Now, this is not a sum total of the amount of tragedy and triumph you have. It's simply the number of discrete symbols of those that you have on your cards. It's now time for Blue's turn, and the first thing they want to do is play an anti-hero card. Now, they can do that because they are on a spot on their corruption track, which matches that up. And we can see this says Parting of Ways. That's going to give one tragedy, and it says they can discard and replace one revealed challenge or trait, and they could gain plus one to their next challenge attempt this turn. So Blue's going to choose one of these to discard, and it's going to be the Trial of the Magi. They know that we as the red player really want this one to complete our Arcana uh, story icons, and they don't want to give us that option, so this one is now gone, removed from the game, and we can now draw the next card, and that is going to be a Force of Nature. When we look at this one in a little more detail, it says you can use your Charisma and Wisdom to get to 7, and you can either enslave the Forest Spirit for 4 Tragedy and a Charisma, or you can restore the balance. That adds 1 to the difficulty, but it brings a Nature Icon and 5 Triumph. Now, the blue player can uh, obviously go after a challenge. They have plus one to that challenge because of their Parting of Ways anti-hero card. And they've decided they do want to do this Force of Nature right here, and they're going to try to enslave that Forest Spirit. 
As I said before, they can use Charisma and Wisdom, and they want to get to 7 for this. Now they can use the basic runes right here, and then for Wisdom, they do have 3 of that out here. So that's going to bring all three of these runes in. And then for Charisma, they don't actually have any showing, but they've decided to use their experience to activate their childhood friend. Now this will let them get uh, plus one to their Charisma until the end of the turn, which means they get to add one of these runes right here. So let's see how successful they are. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then they do, of course, get plus one from this Parting of Ways card that they played. So that is going to get them right to seven. They just barely actually got this done. Now, there are two other bonuses right here. Uh, this one is going to give them one hero card, and this gives them a hero or anti-hero. And they can still only play anti-hero cards. So they're going to draw one of this for that one, and they'll take a hero card for this other one. It's possible they might get it played before the end of the game, but that's starting to look unlikely. The last thing Blue gets to do is tuck this right in over here because they did successfully enslave that forest spirit. And it is worth noting that they have two cards underneath their destiny, and that means they can only put one more. Now the game will end at the end of any turn where one player has completed their destiny by having three cards underneath it. And at that point, every other player will get one more turn, and then we will all count up our scores. It looks like Blue is done with their actions, so they can finish things off by drawing a card. And this one is an adversary. It says the Sorceress. Ooh, it's got an arcane symbol. It has six triumph and a charisma as a bonus. And you have to get to eight using charisma and wisdom. Unfortunately, we don't have much in the way of charisma. But down here, it says that uh, while this challenge is undefeated, once per turn, any player can spend an experience to draw an anti-hero card. So that is actually an ongoing effect whether or not you fight the Sorceress or not. All right, it's now time for us to take our turn. And I just realized we did have this Tap Into Darkness uh, anti-hero card that we could have played on the blue player's turn to really kind of mess them up and stop them from completing that challenge. I just forgot it was there. I need to remember to use these to try and stop them. But the blue player does have one more card they can take. So we will try to keep that in mind because right now it looks like they might be in the lead and they are certainly the ones pushing the endgame condition the most right now. The time has come for us to choose a card, and I think we should go with the Sorceress. Uh, we really want our fourth Arcana symbol. Six uh, Tragedy Points is also great, and we are very, uh, we have a lot of Wisdom, but not a lot of Charisma. But either way, I think that we have a chance to uh, succeed at this one at eight. We do have experience that we could use in order to be able to add some Dark Runes into the mix. This means we can now start building out our rune pool, but before we do that, the blue player actually interrupts us, and they're going to play one of their anti-hero cards. Now, this one says, instill fear, it's going to give them one tragedy, and down below it says they can play this as another hero is attempting a challenge. They must choose another challenge or trait instead, so that means we can't actually fight this sorceress. Uh, the blue player has instilled fear in us, so we need to go back to the drawing board and figure out a different plan for our turn. In addition to all of that, the blue player also gets to tuck this under, and they've just scored another tragedy point at the end of the game, so we are definitely hoping we can mess with them on their next turn. Next up, we have this cursed trait, and it's not particularly great for us. Also, we don't have the ability to take it. We have way more triumph icons than tragedy icons in our area, so we are just not cursed. And the last option is this army of the dead. Well, we have a lot of wisdom, but we have no uh, constitution, and we would need to get to seven. And I'm not particularly interested in either of these rewards. I mean, I guess one uh, this wisdom up here would be plus one point for our people's champion, but another thing we could do is we could spend one of our experience to discard one of these and then draw another card from the top of the deck. Well, I was planning on doing that, but I just realized we have this animal companion. They've been hanging out with us all game long, and if we spend an experience, we would gain a constitution, and that would make this much more doable, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and try our hand at the Army of the Dead. The next thing we have to do is pick a path, and I think it's pretty obviously going to be Praying for Deliverance. That one is going to give us a Wisdom, which will give us an extra Triumph point at the end of the game. So let's look at our Constitution and our Wisdom, and as I mentioned before, we don't have any Constitution at the moment, but we can spend one Experience to activate our Animal Companion. That's going to give us one Constitution, so we can add that into our uh, Rune Pool. That gets added along with the basic runes, and we know that we have uh, maxed out Wisdom already, so that's going to pull all three of these into our pool. The next thing we should consider is playing our cards as well as potentially using experience for Dark Runes. Now right now we can see our average is one and a half for these, then plus one and a half for this, so that brings us to three, then four and a half, six, and then seven and a half. 
we know we are trying to get to 7, so our average is just barely over the threshold that we would need. So we're looking okay, but not super great. Now, another thing that we could do is play a card, and I think we definitely want to play this Fateful Choice. This is going to give us one tragedy at the end of the game, and it says that if we are doing a uh, challenge that has a triumph path on it, then we get to gain a virtue. Now, both of the options on this one actually has the triumph uh, on that path, and we are going for one that matches. So let's use this right now. That's not going to help us defeating this challenge per se, but we can slide that in there, which gives us a point. And we also go up once on our corruption track, and that brings us from four tragedy, uh, from zero tragedy to four. So that is actually a four-point gain plus one or five points by playing that one card. So at the moment, we're looking okay. And this brings us to the hard decision, where we decide if we want to spend this experience to add a dark rune into the roll. Now, that would bring us from 7.5 to 9 as far as our average is concerned, and that is quite a bit over the 7 that we need. However, there is a 50-50 chance if we roll a dark rune that we will become corrupt and then slide back down, losing 4 of those uh, tragedy points. That would be really bad, so I guess either way, we are pushing our luck. We either don't spend the experience and push our luck to try and have our 7.5 average be at least 7, or we push our luck by spending the experience. And I guess if we're pushing our luck in both ways, let's go with a way that doesn't have a guaranteed victory point loss. So let's not bring in any of these runes and see how we do. Well, let's start praying for deliverance in front of this undead army. And we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we actually did more than we needed. That worked out really well for us. I'm, I'm glad we didn't spend that experience there. And at this point, we can pick up a card of our choice. And we can still only play those anti-hero cards. So let's draw another one. Here it is, and it says Desperate Rage. Uh, for each of your tragedy icons in your story, you gain plus one to the next challenge you attempt this turn. Now that is pretty interesting. Although when we look at all of the cards we have in front of ourselves, we have been very triumphant this game. Uh, the only tragedy we have at all is the fateful choice we just played this turn. So this would add plus one to a challenge, which is certainly not bad, and it would give us another tragedy. So I'm not uh, complaining about it, but if we had had a lot more tragedy throughout our life, this could be much more powerful for us at this point. The last thing we can do is gain a bonus experience for our hunter. We did indeed have a wisdom showing up on there. We've done a very good job of uh, getting a lot of experience out of this. I guess part of that has been really targeting those uh, wisdom rolls. We haven't really gone after the dexterity aspect to this so much, but we've been fortunate to have so many good wisdom rolls. So let's get one of those experience points. And then we can tuck this under uh, our card over here. We also get one hero card as a reward. That one is Divine Favor. It says you can play this to get a Wisdom or a Charisma. We certainly don't need the Wisdom, but that Charisma could come into play. Although at this point, when we tuck this, we can see that we have two out of the three total underneath our Destiny as well. So we are only going to get a maximum of one more card tucked before the end of the game. I think we're done with our actions, so we can finish our turn by drawing a card, and this is a trait. It says Arcane. Oh man, this gives one Arcane Story Icon and three Triumph Points. Uh, that is exactly what we need. We need one more uh, Arcana Story Icon, and it's not even a challenge. Uh, now this one says you can only gain this if you have an Intelligence and a Wisdom, or if you have played three Hero Cards. Well, it's currently the green player's turn, and they have five played hero cards, and they do indeed have one arcana story symbol, which means they very much would like that arcane trait as well. So unfortunately for us, it looks like that is going to be what the green player does on this turn. Uh, they're going to just slide this in right over here, and that gives them three triumph points and that arcana story symbol. Uh, that would have been really nice for us to have, but it came out just one turn too late. So far, the green player has been doing a lot of trades lately. Uh, they have not been able to really utilize their Bound by Honor much in the second half of the game, but overall, they're pretty happy with where they're at, and that's going to finish out their actions. Green's turn is done, so we can draw another card, and this one is a challenge. It says Decisive Battle. It uses Strength and Intelligence. That's pretty interesting to us. And you can duel the enemy general for four Triumph points and a Strength, or you can sacrifice your army to gain a Royalty Story Icon, three Tragedy, and an Intelligence. Blue can now take their turn, and they could potentially end the game if they are able to tuck one more card. And it appears they want to have a chance at defeating this Sorceress. They can, of course, build out their rune pool, which starts with the basic runes right here, and then their wisdom and charisma are going to come into play. It appears they have one, two, three, four wisdom, so they can pull all three of these runes into there. And then, as far as charisma is concerned, they have one up there, so they can add this here. 
Now, before they move on, we have remembered to interrupt their turn since they interrupted ours, and we are going to play this Tap Into Darkness anti-hero card on their turn. This says we can play this as another hero is attempting a challenge, and adversaries are effectively challenges for this, and we get to choose one rune of a type we possess and remove it from their attempt. Now, we don't actually have any charisma, but we have lots of wisdom, so we are going to remove one of the wisdom runes from their attempt, which definitely makes that a lot harder for them. The other thing we of course get is one tragedy point for the end of the game. It's time for Blue to face this sorceress, and it's not looking too great. If they have a perfect cast, then they can get to the 8 that they need. So let's see how that goes, and it is not a perfect cast. They have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so they are 2 off. Although, as a benefit, they do get to uh, draw a card of their choice, and they're going to pick up another anti-hero card, which could potentially mess with us again. We're a little worried about the kind of uh, war we started over here. I guess Blue started it. We're just uh, kind of feeding into what they did to us. But either way, Blue gets this card, and then they, of course, did fail this challenge. Now, that's going to get them one experience. But then they will also get two more experience because of their Outlander ability. That says whenever they fail a uh, Constitution or Wisdom challenge, they get these two bonus, and there is Wisdom here in the challenge. So I suppose at the end of the day, they got three of this experience and to finish out their turn, but they did not tuck the card, which means the end game has not yet been triggered. It does look like Blue is done with their actions, though, so we can finish their turn by drawing another card. This is a challenge. It says Dark Revelation. Uh, it, it only applies to Charisma. You need to get to five, and it says you can either be the Child of the Dark Lord, which adds one villainy and four tragedy, or you can add one to the challenge, and you become tainted by the Dark Magic, which adds one of the Arcana story uh, icons, as well as five tragedy. All right, we can now take our turn, and if we are successful at tucking a card, then we will initiate the endgame. Now, when we look at all of these options, one of them really jumps out to me, and that is this decisive battle. It uses intelligence and strength, and we have a lot of intelligence and a little bit of strength. And if we do this and then go for the top path, that'll give us four triumph and then one strength. And one strength gives us a bonus point at the end of the game due to our destiny. So let's face this decisive battle. The next thing we do is build out our rune pool, so we get to add these three basic ones, and we are hoping the blue player's uh, anti-hero card they just drew is not going to mess with us, but so far we appear to be okay. Uh, now it looks like our intelligence and strength are going to come into play here, and we currently have one, two, three intelligence, so that's going to pull all three of these into our pool, and then we have one strength over here, which will add this rune. Now, at this point, our average expected value is 7, because we have 1.5 right here, and then we can add 1.5 from this, so that's 3, then 4.5, 6, and then 1 for this, so that brings us to 7. Now, the uh, decisive battle we are hoping to overcome is a 7, so I do think we should do something else, and unfortunately, uh, we cannot use this Desperate Rage. I talked about it uh, last turn, uh, but I was uh, misinformed as far as how this works. You get to add plus 1 for every tragedy in your story, but the hero cards over here are not in your story. Things in your story are technically cards that are tucked underneath your story cards or your allies right over here. Now, at this point, we don't have any tragedy in our story at all, so that does not really come into play. Although, I do think we could play this one. This could be our last turn of the game, and it would simply add plus zero, and we would still get one tragedy at the end of the game. So, let's go ahead and do that. I don't see a reason not to, but then I also think we should spend one of our experience to add a dark rune into the mix. Now we have one more experience left over, and we could hypothetically use this and our bad luck ability to flip this to the side that we need. Uh, maybe we flip it over to this side and become more corrupt to make sure that we actually succeed with this challenge. Or if we have more than we need, we can flip this one back over and not lose out on those four tragedy points. Well, let's see how we do. Well, that is a lot of ones. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's actually two more than we need. So we did uh, pretty well here. Maybe we did not need to commit this rune here, and I do think we are going to use our bad luck now. We can spend one experience to flip this over, so we are now at eight. That is still enough, but it does mean we don't become more corrupt, which is pretty important to us. So I guess uh, overall we lost one point, not lose four points. Uh, maybe we should not have added this in, but again, we were at seven before, and seven was the average expected value. So we could have been fine, but I did not want to chance it. So this means we have been successful, and we can now tuck this card into our area. This also means we now have three cards tucked underneath our destiny, and that is going to officially instigate the end of the game. Now, as I mentioned before, we are done with the game because we have filled up all of our slots, but each one of our opponents now get one final turn before we start adding up our points. 
Now we do have to finish out our turn by drawing another card, and this is going to be a challenge. It says Heroic Rescue, and it uses Charisma as well as Dexterity, and you can either do a Call for Mercy with this Rescue, that's going to give a uh, Hero card to Triumph and a Charisma, or you can make this even harder and save the Innocent to gather a uh, Justice Symbol, 3 Triumph, as well as a Dexterity. Alright, the green player can now take their final turn of the game. And it appears they actually really like this challenge that just came out. They are going to try a Call for Mercy with this Heroic Rescue. Next up, they can build out their Rune Pool, and the applicable attributes are Charisma and Dexterity. Now we can see they have just one Charisma at the moment, and they have two Dexterity showing, so they can add these right over here. And that does not seem like a lot, but they have decided they want to play two of their Hero cards. The first one will be Narrow Escape, and this one lets you add uh, Dexterity or a Constitution to your roll. So they're just going to add a Dexterity in this case. That is going to be the triple one with uh, only a plus one to its average uh, roll value, but that's still something they want. And then the other one will be Dazzling Wit. This lets them add a Charisma or an Intelligence. So they're going to bring a Charisma over here, and of course they have also banked two more Triumph Points for the end of the game. At this point, Green is feeling pretty good, so they're going to try their Call for Mercy, and they got a lot of ones. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones, and that is still enough to get to the six that they needed. Uh, they also get this bonus right here, which gives them an anti-hero card, which they are far too virtuous to be able to play. Next up, we can see that for the first time in a long time, their Bound by Honor motivation is going to kick in. This will get them one experience as long as they overcame a challenge by one or less, and they have seven over here on the runes to the six of the challenge. So they can add this right over into their area, and then they can tuck this underneath their destiny. Now, as part of the reward, they get to draw another hero card, and they still have a whole a bunch of these in their hand. And it appears they're actually not done. They are going to play this card now, which they've been holding on to for a little bit. It says Deny the Darkness, and it allows them to go up twice on the Virtue track, or they can give one opponent one Virtue, which I guess could kind of mess up their plans if they're worried about an opponent uh, getting in their way. So they're just going to go up uh, once right here. They kind of peg out, but that is going to gain them four more Triumphs, so that's pretty important. And they get one Triumph for this card, so the green player has obviously done a very good job of playing these hero cards throughout the game. Green is now done with their turn, so they can finish out by drawing a card. This is a challenge, and it says Sword of Darkness. Uh, it just uses strength that you have to get to 5, and you can wield the Dark Blade to gather one anti-hero card in Fort Tragedy, or you can add one to the difficulty and shatter the Dark Sword, and that will give you 5 Triumph and 1 Strength. Alright, Blue can now take their final turn of the game. And it appears they really don't like the look of any of these options, so they're going to spend one of their experience and do a journey action. This allows them to discard one of them. They'll get rid of this stealing the treasure, and we'll reveal another card. And this one is an adversary. It says, the Warlord, you get one royalty symbol and six triumph, and a strength if you overcome the Warlord. And it says down here, if a hero has no allies, then this challenge has plus one versus that hero. So having at least one ally is a good thing. Now the blue player does have an ally, and they've decided that this is going to be their best bet for the turn. So they can now build out their rune pool. Now they get the basic runes right here, and then strength and constitution will come into effect. We can see they have one, two, three, four constitution, so they have more than enough to get all three of these out. And then as far as strength is concerned, they have one of them showing over here, so they can add that in. Currently, this rune pool has an average value of 7, and they need to get to 8, and they don't really want to push their luck, uh, so they're going to spend one of their experience to add a dark rune. Of course, this has a 50-50 chance of corrupting them, which could lose them for tragedy, but they still feel this is worth it. Well, here it is. This is the final challenge of the game, with the blue player trying to defeat the warlord, and let's see how it goes. Well, at this point, things aren't looking too good. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they need to get to 8. However, the blue player does have an anti-hero card, and they are going to play it, and it says bend the rules. They can play this during a challenge they are attempting to choose one rune and flip it over, and they're going to flip this rune over right there to the constitution side, and now they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and that is exactly enough for them to defeat the warlord. They can add this anti-hero card into their stack, and that's going to give them one tragedy, and now they can tuck this warlord in, and that is going to get them one royalty icon, as well as six triumph and a strength, and that is going to be the last action of their turn, so the game is officially over, and it's now time to add up our points. 
Now we are fortunate that the game comes with this nice scoring pad to make it easier to count up all of our points, and we can start off by counting up our triumph. Now one big source of triumph for us is our destiny. We're going to get one triumph for every strength and uh, wisdom symbol, and one triumph for every plus one symbol in our story. So we can look out here, and we'll get one, then two, three, four five, six, and then when in terms of the plus ones, we'll get uh, up to seven and then eight. So that means we have eight points for our destiny, but then we can also add up the triumph that is just printed throughout our story. So we're at eight, then we can go nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 23 is where we're gonna end up there. We can slot that in right up here, and now we can count up our tragedy. Now, in terms of our overall story with the cards we tucked, we have no tragedy at all. The only tragic thing that happened is we became a little corrupt along the way. So we do actually have four tragedy coming in from that. We can add that over there, and we have no experience at the end of the game, so we can log that as a zero. Now, in terms of the hero cards we played, we have two of them, so that will give us two triumph points for that. And then we have three tragedy points coming in from those anti-hero cards. So we can add that in right here. And then we can finalize things off by counting up our story icons. Now, when we look out here, we can see we have one, two, and then three of the arcana icons. We were never able to get up to four, but that does mean we will get four points. And then in terms of the divinity icons, we do have one, two, three, four. So we get the eight points for that. Now we do have one other icon. It is a nature icon hiding over here on our companion. I kind of forgot about this for a lot of the game, unfortunately, but one icon is not gonna be worth any points. So that will be worth uh, eight plus four or 12 total. This means we ended the game with 44 points, but another thing that the game suggests you do is briefly tell the story of your character that you built throughout the play. So in addition to just having a score, we could see over here that we started out as a spiritual hunter who studied really hard and excelled at our studies. So I guess we kind of started in the forests and found ourselves into uh, the uh, universities. Uh, that really plays in well with the fact that we had almost mastered the uh, arcana arts and we were born lucky as we went through life. I think that is part of the reason why we have no tragedy showing up anywhere in our story, except of course for the corruption. Uh, we became corrupted as we really fought for uh, the light, realistically. We have all four of the divinity symbols, which means we really could not have done better with that as we were the people's champion, really fighting uh, uh, things that were harder than usual by getting these plus ones over here. Uh, we also were able to duel an enemy general and pray for deliverance as you know that onslaught came in. Uh, in the end, we did wield the sun's light, but again, uh, even though we did a lot of good, we became corrupted in the process but overall, that is the arc of our life. Let's now move on to the green player, and they can reveal their destiny card, and it shows that they are a paragon of light. At the end of the game, they get three triumph if they have one virtue or more. They actually ended with maximum virtue over here. That's part of the reason why they went all game long trying not to uh, cast those dark runes. Now, they also get one triumph for every triumph symbol showing throughout their story. And let's start by uh, counting up their destiny points. We can see they obviously get the three destiny, uh, three triumph because they are virtuous. And then in terms of their triumph icons, they have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means they will get six plus three or nine. And then we can add up the rest of their triumph. Uh, starting at nine, they will add this to go to 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then 21, 22, 23, plus eight over here for being uh, such a, I guess, paragon of light that really worked out well for them. This ends up being 31 triumph total, and we can now look at tragedy, and they did have a little bit squeak in there uh, near the end of their life with three tragedy right over there, and they do have two experience left over, which will get them two points. Now, this is a big one for them. They went all game long just uh, plowing through these hero cards. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight played, so that will be eight points, but then they have no anti-hero cards. Now, in terms of the story icons, we know that they started off with a divinity icon with their destiny, but they were only able to pick up two more of them, so they only get four points for that. They did not fully complete that arc overall for them, but they were able to get some of these arcana icons over here. They have one here and one there, so that means they will get two points, and overall it seems like the green player was not as focused on story, so they will get the uh, four plus two or six points total for that. This means they ended the game with an impressive 50 points. That is certainly more than our 44. And as far as their overall character arc is concerned, they started off as a foundling. Uh, they became an apprentice, although along the way they had to escape pursuers. Uh, maybe they were slavers or something like that trying to uh, really capture this foundling because they did not have a family. Um, they resisted temptation while they were apprentice as they became inventive, uh, trying to really tinker around with various things, and they ended up being very successful. We can see they really went from rags to riches with all of those inventions. 
Christians, but all along they were bound by the honor uh, that really was their motivation, and because of that, they ended up giving money to the poor uh, along the way. Now, a major driving force for them is the fact that they are a paragon of light. Uh, divinity was a major part of their life, even though they ended that uh, a part of their life not fully fulfilled. They really feel like they could have been more divine overall, uh, or at least chased the divine, but they were so virtuous as they really chased that one down, uh, and a big part of helping that out was the fact that, you know, they had uh, harnessed arcane powers and the uh, supernatural way in which they could really invent things just seemed to uh, work out well for them as they also did good for the people. Lastly, we have the blue player over here, and they have revealed their destiny, and it is an intrepid explorer. Now we can see this gives them one nature story icon at the start, and they will get one triumph for every constitution and uh, intelligence icon that shows up in their area. They will also get one triumph for every type of story icon that they have showing, and we can start right over here. It looks like they have these justice icons. They also have royalty as well as nature, and one little arcana down here. So that's four different types of icons out of the six total. So that will be four triumph, and then in terms of the constitution and intelligence, well, they have have one, two, three, four constitution and no intelligence. So that's four triumph there plus four for the story icons means they have eight triumph for their destiny. And then moving on with the rest of their triumph, they go from eight, um, adding six onto that, bringing them to 14, then 15. And that's really where their triumph ends. So they can add that right over here. And we can see they had a decent bit of tragedy really happened to them at the later stages of their life. That's four plus two or six. Plus they became pretty corrupt throughout the game as well. So they add four to that and that will be 10 tragedy total. And that is the most tragic of all of these characters. They also end the game with one experience, which will get them one point. And then in terms of hero cards, well... They didn't really do the hero thing. You know, they were uh, exploring around a bunch, but really didn't help people out. They will get zero points for that, but they do have three of these anti-hero cards, which will get them three points there. Now, in terms of the story icons, they only have one arcana and one of these royalty icons, so that will be worth zero points for them, but they were able to get four of these justice icons. They have this childhood friend giving them one, and then two, three, four, so that gives them eight points there, and uh, in terms of nature, they have one, two, three, four, so they were able to uh, make two of these happen, which means that is 16 points total for story. And this means they're going to end the game with 45 points, just barely squeaking ahead of us. I really thought we were doing well, but we ended up coming in third place. And in terms of the story that the blue player was able to really uh, play through, they started out as a brave and adventurous outlander. Uh, they always knew their destiny was to be an intrepid explorer. They had to obviously forage for food as they were out there in the wilderness trying to really find themselves exploring around. Uh, they ended up uh, finding themselves in a position where their motivation could really be honed by the fact that they found a master. They got to uh, train with that and... Uh, they became enlightened as they solved mysteries and, you know, found lost wisdom to really fold into their overall, um, you know, exploration uh, mindset as they went throughout life. And then in the later stages, they were able to hunt down and uh, defeat a warlord. They enslaved a forest spirit at one point in their travels, I guess, when they were in the forests. And they even got uh, arrested and put in jail where they got to plot their revenge at one point. So they led a very colorful uh, life. It was not the best life. They became somewhat corrupt and they did some not so great things overall, but in the end, they really, you know, saw nature. They really were in tune with nature overall, and they had what they felt was a very honed, defined idea of justice. At this point, we have officially come to the end of the game. Green is our victor. Blue just barely squeaked in with a second place over us who fell in third place. And you got to have a good idea about the various lives that all of these characters got to lead as we played a full three-player game of Call to Adventure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Honestly, I was a little bit surprised when I tallied up all of the uh, scores and the green player won by a pretty sizable amount. Uh, I honestly felt like it was going to be between us and the blue player and the blue player just barely squeaked out one extra point on us. But we ended up actually coming in third place. It seems like uh, the green player uh, spent a lot of turns in the middle of part of the game uh, acquiring some traits. Obviously, everybody failed uh, a couple challenges as the game went along, but it seemed like things kind of evened out uh, near the end, although uh, we did lose by six points overall, which is somewhat significant when the winning score is uh, 50. Now, uh, there are lots of different ways that we were all able to acquire these points, and I was certainly trying to uh, have each one of the players really play towards their uh, various destinies, and uh, part of that had to do with the specific cards that we were drafting, but then there was kind of like an emergent destiny type of thing that uh, came out as well, or maybe not destiny, but you know, as we really tried to overcome challenges, obviously we were very tempted to spend our experience in order to cast those dark runes, which could potentially corrupt us. 
and I felt like I was really kind of folding that corruption into the story of the uh, strife that really went into trying to overcome some of these challenges. In particular, uh, for us as the red player, uh, we had that one turn where we became uh, quite corrupt as we were trying to wield the sun's light. You know, it's like we were making the world better for everybody else as we were actually, you know, succumbing to this corruption to actually pull this thing off. And I don't know, I kind of liked uh, uh, kind of weaving that in uh, uh, to the various uh, stories that each character was uh, building out. Now, obviously, um, the story threads that each character has is kind of like an outline. So uh, trying to put together a cohesive uh, uh, narrative for their entire life uh, sometimes makes a little bit more sense than others. Although I was a little surprised um, at how many of these cards actually seem to match up with the uh, uh, the kind of arc that was going on. Maybe that's just because I don't do much storytelling myself, but I actually kind of enjoyed uh, telling the, the, the little stories for each player at the end of the game. Uh, now, uh, in terms of the play itself, I think we all played pretty well. Um, us as the red player, well, I definitely forgot that we had a nature symbol for a large part, portion of the game, and I think that could have come into play. Uh, but another thing that I want to mention are those anti-hero cards. Uh, we didn't really have any of those show up into the game until about the 50-minute mark or so, and uh, those they bring in a lot of interaction between the players, and I was happy that uh, a couple of the players got corrupt enough to actually sling a few of those around so we could see how those interact. Um, but obviously, from my perspective, as I am controlling each one of the players, having them potentially interrupt each other's turns is uh, definitely just one more plate to try and juggle. And I was trying to, you know, really simulate how that uh, would happen and how it would play out. And obviously, the blue player and us, we kind of hit each other back and forth, and then the green player ended up winning the game. And I think maybe that's uh, partially because in my head, I kind of felt like the green player wasn't doing as well, and uh, they ended up emerging out of some of the punching that happened near the end. But um, I think at this point, that's going to wrap up all of my thoughts on this one. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.